This video is brought to you by Factory Direct Trains. Visit FactoryDirectTrains.com and check out their wide selection of model railroading products and supplies. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital and today we've got a good old fashioned layout update. Welcome back, everybody. First of all, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell icon so that you are eligible for the 5,000 subscriber contest sponsored by Factory Direct Trains. You've got a little bit longer left to enter, and I'm giving away an InScale Broadway Limited T1 with DCC and Paragon 3 Sound and an HO scale of DCC Ready Athern GE-9 in the Union Pacific Chicago Northwestern paint scheme. And you better hurry up and enter, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you are eligible. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that like button and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates, including when that contest happens. I'll put a link on how to enter in the description below. So today we have a pretty exciting little video for those of you that follow my channel regularly. You know that I've been starting to build a new layout. I'm in a new house, so that means a new layout. And we're going to be doing a little bit of bench work today. Um, and then we're also going to be doing some foam and a little bit of marking and getting ready to do some wiring. You're going to see me lay track and kind of get track into position, not permanently affixing it, but since I use Kato Unitrack, I can lay the track down and figure out if my track plan works and then take it back up. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you'll remember last time we did some wiring with the Arduino multi-block signal system and we got a lot of stuff in place. I also wired up real quick one of my crossing signals that you've seen in previous tutorial. I'll link that right up here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put down the Lawan plywood base that's going to sit on top of the entire layout. And uh, this is just, you know, I'm putting it down because we're getting ready to start doing some more work that's going to require the base to be on the layout. And I'm just going to put four screws in each corner just in case I ever need to remove this from there. I'll know where to go and it won't be terribly invasive on the layout if I have to dig down to those screws. So now I'm taking some scrap wood that I had in order to make the extension. Now I saved this from when I built some wood cabinets. This is a piece of OSB and these are really, really cheap. You can get them for under $10 sometimes for a uh, four by eight sheet like I have here from Home Depot. And I'm just cutting it down to right around 30 inches. If you'll notice, I'm just using a circular saw and I've clamped down a straight edge and that just worked like a charm and cut it right off right there. Next, I'm taking some more of my one by threes right here and I just have this kind of wood laying around and we're just going to be drilling these all in place. I'm not doing any glue or anything fancy. I'm just using some screws and we're going to be putting this all in place. I'm also putting a couple extra scraps of 1x3 over here so that I have a nice L shape to clamp the leg around. Again, I'm just using scrap wood, so that's kind of why this doesn't look like full on bench work here. I've had these L girders laying around from my previous layout, so I fastened them on. And now I actually took one of the other leftover L girders from my previous layout and cut it down to size, and I'm going to use it as the mounting point to form the L of my layout. And we're gonna put that section in place right there, make sure it's level up with the rest of the layout and we're gonna clamp it in place. And then we're just gonna attach some screws to it to hold it there. And there is the base level of our bench work. I do have a little bit more work to do. I need to put a few more supports in place, but that's what our base work is gonna be. So now it's time to put on the foam base. Now, if you're like me, you don't have a truck, you can go pick up a big four by eight sheet of wood. And this is a slightly more expensive way to do foam. And I know you can get it cut, but I really didn't wanna do this. Home Depot sometimes sells these one inch, two foot by two foot sections of foam. And I know a lot of people are saying it's definitely cheaper to go with the the four by eight sheets, but this was a very, very convenient way for me to do the foam on my layout. And I'm going to be covering my layout with a lot of plaster, so the little edges and corners aren't gonna matter as much. And what I'm doing is I basically just line them up and then I score them and I snap them in place and then just kind of fit them and make sure that everything uh, fits properly and I have everything sized accordingly. Once I've done that, I take some simple latex caulk and I use this as my glue to glue down the foam to the Lawan plywood base. And this is just the absolute cheapest way to glue. I'm sure plenty of you use latex caulk to do your gluing. This is just really, really simple stuff. You just make a few lines 
and you press your piece down and then we'll put some weights on it a little bit later. As you can see, it's just step and repeat right here where we're just gonna take some pieces up and we're just gonna put some latex caulk down and we press the piece back in place. And then once we finally finish that up, we're gonna start putting some weights on to the layout, just whatever you can find that's nice and heavy, just to hold it down. You really wanna wait overnight and let this stuff really dry and set in place, because once it sets, it's not going anywhere without ripping the foam apart. So it's definitely a really good, inexpensive way to do glue if you've never glued down foam before. And here's all the weights that I have, and I'm gonna leave it overnight to dry. And it's been a day and I've let it dry and I've also laid down my track and I'm doing a little bit of testing. You may notice slight differences from the original track plan. Let's go over a few of those. First of all, I've moved the town area to this little center spot in the layout. I don't really love town areas in the middle, but this works. And I've also kind of hooked around the staging track area to where it's gonna go like this. And I think I may have a little bit of a water feature there. And I've also put all of the different buildings in place right here in the industrial area. Now, the last thing we're gonna do on this update is we're going to install one of these little puck lights. They're battery powered and I need some easy lighting up underneath my layout. And these things are just so easy to install. They're battery powered, they have a sticky pad, and I'm just sticking them up under the layout and clicking them on. So that's it for this layout update. We've got a lot done, but we still got a whole lot left to go. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any layout updates and any other videos for that matter. I do all sorts of model railroading videos. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that like button and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any of those updates when they come out. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Happy railroading!